Dr. Fizz here on Special Relativity and the Lorentz Transformation. We're going to derive it. The Special Theory of Relativity proposed by Albert Einstein in 1905 begins with two postulates. The first one being the laws of physics are the same in all inertial frames. And an inertial frame is one where the velocity is constant both in magnitude and direction. You're moving in a straight line. Your velocity can be zero and it can be anything up to the limiting speed which is the speed of light according to the second postulate as we see the second postulate states that the speed of light in vacuum is the same in all inertial frames to make that work we're not going to be able to go faster in the speed of light and we're going to derive an addition formula that will demonstrate that from relativity theory well we begin here by looking at two inertial reference frames, k, our laboratory frame, and k prime, which moves at velocity v down the x-axis. When the origins overlap, we let t equal t prime equals zero, and we send a light beam off in the laboratory frame. The light will travel down the x-axis according to distances velocity times time, x equals ct, c is the speed of light, and we'll have an equation for the k prime frame in terms of the x prime and t prime, and notice that the c is not prime because the speed of light must be the same as measured in all frames of reference that are the inertial frames. So we come here to squaring both sides of the equation so we don't have to worry about light traveling down the negative axis or the positive axis. It will be true in either case, this equation. And by subtracting c squared t squared we get zero. But the main thing here is that the form of this equation on each side is the same for each of the frames of reference. And we call this an invariant principle where you have an invariance and the invariant is this x squared minus c squared t squared your spatial coordinate squared minus the speed of light squared times your time coordinate squared and this will be the key to us for us to use the rotation idea to arrive at the Lorentz transformation so what we have here we have studied before x and y and a rotated coordinates x prime and y prime and looked at point p from each point of view and x and y in the non-rotated frame describes p but also x prime and y prime. Now there is an invariance principle here and that is each frame will agree, each system of coordinates will agree that the distance from O to p is the same. This length is invariant and the square of that length is invariant. So if you take x squared and y squared, add them, and if you then do a separate calculation, take x prime squared and y prime squared and add them, you get the same result. So x squared plus y squared is invariant for each of these systems and if you use the mathematician's trick, Minkowski, the mathematician, came up with this trick, y is i c t. When you square the y, i is the square root of minus 1, so i squared is negative 1, and you have c squared t squared, you arrive at the invariance needed for special relativity, which means with this substitution, I will have my Lorentz transformation, and I already have a transformation of the old and new coordinates here. Notice that y is no longer here a spatial coordinate. With this trick this is time. This is time. So don't confuse this y with the regular, you know, the y in the k frame or the k prime frame. We are replacing this y with this trick to become our time axis. So we then proceed to look at the transformation that we did last week. Here's how you memorize this. You memorize the rotation matrix which doesn't have the x and y's in it, just the angle and the trig. Cosine theta upper left, sine theta upper right. Then this diagonal 
you slide down here and put sine with the minus sign. In this diagonal, it's cosine. So cosine, sine, minus sine, cosine. Then when you hit that with the x and y, you get the uh, transformation. We use the Minkowski trick, and by using the Minkowski trick, we replace the y with ICT. So we have ICT prime, ICT for y. And the next step is to relate the theta to v. This is the Lorentz transformation. This is the Lorentz transformation. We already did the Lorentz transformation, right? We just have to do some work here. This is the power of this rotation idea that we did last week in our study of theoretical principles, theoretical physics uh, gems. So what we do here is I like to think of this as saying, hey, you're on the x, uh, your k prime frame. Don't move. Stay put. I'm going to watch you. If you don't move, delta x prime is zero, then I can watch you. And when I make a delta x and delta t, that if I divide, uh, make a ratio of those and divide, I get your speed. If you were to walk around on your frame, you would mess me up. So stay put. So your delta x prime is zero. And then when I calculate delta x over delta t, I will get your speed v. So here's what we do. We take the delta of the variables, so delta x prime, delta x, you take like delta both sides of the equation, cosine theta is a constant here, plus ic delta t sine theta, and that's your delta x prime, it must be zero, and then I solve to get delta x over delta t. So I subtract the ic delta t sine theta and then I divide to get my delta t on the left side in the denominator. I divide to get my cosine theta over here and then I have v is minus ic tangent theta. I want to solve for my angle. So tangent of theta is negative v over ic. I want to get rid of the i in the denominator, multiply top and bottom by i, and then i squared frees up this, makes it what positive, and I get i over v, v over c. Now I want you to uh, think about this because the imaginary idea here for the tangent would freak some folks out. In other words, tangent of theta is a slope, and a slope is real. It's a rise over a run. What are you doing with this? But this is characteristic of Feynman's style. Feynman would encounter things like this in his calculations, and he just goes on and doesn't worry about it. So what I want you to do is draw a nice little triangle and label this theta. I want you to put IVC on the rise and a 1 on the run. So rise over run is the tangent and that would be the correct triangle, right triangle, so that you can then find the cosine and sine, which is what we're going to be needing uh, earlier for our transformation. I want you to pause the video and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse of that triangle. Okay? We're back. You should be surprised because look what you get. All right? we get, there we go, we get 1 squared plus IV over C squared, the I squared is negative 1, you get this, the square root of this, you get this nice term that we've seen in the Lorentz transformation, the square root of the quantity 1 minus B squared over C squared, that is your hypotenuse. So when you now plug in for the cosine of theta, it's 1 over that, the sine is going to be this over that. You can see you're going to get this in the denominator all over the place up here. And that's what we're going to do next. Remember, it's cosine, diagonal, cosine, and then sine, negative sine, diagonal. So when we come over to our uh, substitutions, this is the cosine. So that would be 1 over the radical, right? The adjacent side over the hypotenuse. This is sine, all right? This is your y, ICT. This is your sine. So you want I, V over C over the hypotenuse. And then for the y prime, which is ICT prime case, remember this here is sine and negative sine, 
All right. And this is cosine, cosine, remember from the rotation matrix. And this is your y, this is your y prime. So this does the job. And then we can simplify this. i times i is negative 1. C cancels, and you have x minus vt divided by this radical. This, you might recall, is your Lorentz transformation for the x prime, where you have the Galilean transformation divided by this radical. For the t prime case, we want to divide by ic. IC so that'll be t, we'll put t first, over the radical, see? And then here, if you divide by i, c, the i's cancel. You have c squared. You'll have negative x, v over c squared. And you have it. We have derived the Lorentz transformation in a very elegant way.